Hello and welcome to another video. I just came home from a day at work and it was very challenging. Challenging in a good way, but it was still challenging. So uh, I guess what is a better way of ending a challenging uh, work day and uh, relax a bit than uh, recording a video on uh, mass equivalent units? And the answer should be obvious. There's uh, nothing better than that, right? So let's get started. This is passion, my friends. And uh, this is a question and answer video. I read some of your questions and comments and I realized that there are some uh, misunderstandings about the mass equivalent unit model. And in this video I'm going to clarify them. So uh, let's start with a comment by Badwolf. He said that in order for a T3P gen to have a mass equivalent unit uh, output, you also need to build mass fabricators, right? these guys. So I should have included them in the calculation I made when I compared the T3 power generator and the RAS preset support ICU. And Batwolf also argues that this makes the support ICU less of a downcycling choice because the support ICU creates mass without uh, mass fabricators. Within the mass equivalent unit model, this argument is not valid. I'll explain why soon. But uh, first, let's assume that this argument is valid. Then uh, we forget about the model for a second, and the assumption that the 2500 power output of the T3 power generator is wasted without mass fabs is, is valid, right? We just assume that. Then you would also have to consider that this uh, 1020 power output per second of the support ICU is wasted, right? And uh, you would have a requirement for mass fabricators in both cases. You would need 17 mass fabricators to uh, convert the entire power of this power generator into mass and in the support ICU case uh, you would still need seven, right? And that's less than here but uh, you still need them, right? Otherwise you're you're still wasting this mass. The power generator is also wasting if you use this argumentation, right? And if you do the math now with uh, the seven and the 17 for the support ICU and the region, then uh, you would come to the conclusion that the support ICU is still a, a clear downcycling choice. So as you argue correctly, if uh, this assumption holds, then uh, it is a little bit less of a downcycling choice than before due to the mass fabricators. But uh, since you also need mass fabricators for this case, uh, it is still a very notable downcycling choice. So, so much about that, right? But. Uh, here we want to stick to the mass equivalent unit model and if we do that then uh, the assumption is wrong because the model says that the power isn't wasted uh, of this power generator and, and of this support ICU neither right not none of the power is wasted even without mass fabricators because the power adds to mass equivalent units in a similar way your mass does right the whole point uh, of the mass equivalent unit model is to say that mass and power are the same and uh, it, it doesn't matter uh, which of the two you're getting, right? So it doesn't matter if you have a economy that's based of 50% uh, uh, mass extractors and 50% uh, power generators or it's a base uh, with an economy that consists of 100% uh, mass extractors and no power generators, right? So in a real game we would stall here, but but in the mass equivalent unit model we would not, right? Because it doesn't matter, right? And an economy that consists 100% of power and absolutely zero uh, mass uh, generating structures would also work out in the mass equivalent unit sense, right? So mass and power are the same right they are both just an ingredient to mass equivalent units and uh, mass equivalent units is the only thing we measure our eco in that's what the model says and uh, this works because uh, the model is making two assumptions and the first assumption is that we have an infinite supply of t2 mass fabricators and in the mass equivalent unit model these uh, mass fabricators in their uh, rate are going to be mass equivalent unit neutral right because the one mass this is creating is uh, basically compared to the 150 power this is uh, spending and the 150 power are uh, minus one masculine unit one mass is plus one masculine unit 
So this is going to break even perfectly, right, in, within the model. And that's like the, the foundation of the model, actually, right? The rationale of it, if you wish. And in this model, we assume we always have uh, infinite supply of T2 mass fabricators in all games. And this exchange rate just always works. And what's actually important is that this exchange rate between mass and power uh, works in both directions. So you can take one mass and you give 150 power, but you can also take 150 power and give one mass, right? And that's why in uh, theory we have this uh, negative mass fabricator in a sense, right? A mass fabricator that is going to produce 150 power per second at the cost of one mass per second, right? And we know that this doesn't exist in a real game, but within the model it exists, all right? And uh, this whole thing works out uh, because we never waste any power and we never waste any mass. How do we waste power? How do we waste mass? Well, you do so by overflowing, right? And the mass equivalent unit model just says that you cannot overflow. You have infinite storage and you can collect it or you can spend it, the mass equivalent units, but you can never waste it, right? So infinite mass storage, infinite power storage. That's uh, the second uh, assumption of the model, right? And that should explain why the assumption is wrong, that uh, the power this is generating is, is wasted, right? It's not. You, you can just keep it. And it's, it's not going to be power. It's going to be mass equal units, right? So that's, that's pure economy this is generating each second. And you can always use it. So um, let's move on to the next question. Uh, another player asked, uh, you could have gone into some of the aforementioned drawbacks, like the drawbacks of the mass equivalent model, right? And after uh, explaining why uh, the power here isn't wasted and uh, why this is a downcycling opportunity, uh, we basically uh, already mentioned some uh, of these drawbacks, right? But let me summarize again. So um, a mass equivalent unit assumes infinite access to real T2 mass fabricators and fictional negative T2 mass fabricators. This is a drawback because some games don't reach the stage where these are relevant and uh, they won't be built in the game. And these are a concept that only exists in theory. And that's why uh, that's the major drawback of the model, right? In a real game, if you had a setup like this, you would uh, stall power and not get any mass because uh, the f extractors can't function without power. And uh, this would not uh, allow you to spend any of your eco, right? You could never use uh, such a setup for anything. And that's why this, this drawback matters, right? And the second drawback is, uh, is about the starch. And infinite mass starch is actually somewhat realistic. So any mid-range to pro player is not going to overflow mass in, in a game, right? So I guess if there is reclaim in the center of some map at the beginning of the map, then, uh, well, there may be some overflow, right? But it is as if this mass never existed to begin with, pretty much, as both players uh, who are going for the middle reclaim are going to overflow some in these situations. But uh, technically there is not going to be uh, any situation in a real game where people overflow mass and waste it, right? In team games, uh, mid-range team games, people are going to uh, overflow some mass sometimes, but the allies are going to use it. For the team, this means there is no mass wasted. And in one versus one, uh, it's usually more competitive, and we're not assuming uh, complete beginners here, so no mass being wasted, right? Infinite storage for mass is realistic, because we never actually use our uh, like full capacity of mass. And infinite power, however, uh, is actually a major drawback of the model because that's super unrealistic. You know how expensive such a uh, power storage is and from pre uh, previous videos you also know that um, there's practically uh, no way of uh, storing power in an economic way. You store power because the game balance or the game design uh, makes it uh, makes it mandatory to do so. So you need a power storage for overcharge if you want to go for an ACU upgrade uh, to a uh, gun, maybe, it uh, may make sense to have some power in the bank to, to get it quicker. And 
in the late game you don't want to uh, have your economy uh, fluctuate as much so, so you have this uh, a couple of uh, power storages uh, for example Ardi or like the Eye of Rian these units uh, need power storage to, to operate right and that's why you build them but usually you want to minimize uh, the number of power storages you're building because uh, they don't really add uh, anything to your economy as the storage they're adding is uh, relatively small right you can see how fast this is going to fill up so you don't see these a lot actually and that's why this is such a huge uh, drawback of the model because even good players uh, in the early mid game are going to start uh, overflowing power constantly even if it's just a bit that's basically massive units that are uh, leaking from uh, their setup and that's within the model actually the same as a constant uh, leakage of uh, of mass right so this is a major drawback that uh, massive units um, assume that we can store power uh, for free and uh, infinitely right and uh, another drawback is one that uh, bad wolf has explained uh, namely uh, adjacency uh, here we go so adjacency means that if you connect your uh, t2 mass fabricators to your uh, t3 power generator you're going to spend less than the 150 power per second uh, for the one mass you're getting and uh, yes not uh, accounting for adjacency is a drawback uh, but i'd say that within the model uh, this is not a huge issue actually because in some cases when the game doesn't reach the stage where you build uh, mass fabricators you still have an exchange between mass and power going on and that happens when you build extra uh, T1 power generators, for example, in the one versus one game, or uh, when you uh, reclaim some of your power generators, right? And usually this uh, exchange is not going to happen uh, as um, quickly as with the uh, T2 mass fabricators, and the exchange rate is going to be more expensive. So if you want to exchange power, you're usually going to, uh, to, to spend more uh, power for the mass you're getting. If you want to exchange mass, you're usually going to, to uh, spend more uh, power for the mass you're getting, right, than, than uh, this, okay? So in the early game, uh, this exchange also happens, but it's more expensive. And in the late game, you have, uh, well, this adjacency uh, C value, maybe maybe around um, like 130 power for one mass, if you connect this to a uh, reactor, right? And so in, in one situation, uh, you overestimate uh, this exchange rate. In one situation, you underestimate this exchange rate. And uh, my point is that uh, the rounding values may actually, the rounding arrows may actually cancel each other out to some extent. So it is true that adjacency uh, is uh, not accounted for in this model. And it's also true that it is an issue in some games. But uh, if you use it uh, in a, let's say, expected value consideration over the course of multiple games, then uh, this is uh, to some extent going to cancel each other out and it's going to stay accurate. Uh, not considering the uh, adjacency, right? That's just an idea. So an okayish uh, approximation after all. And I guess a bad wolf also suggested that uh, disregarding the build time uh, you need to uh, uh, spend while these uh, economic structures are built is a drawback. And um, while well, this suggestion is uh, not very interesting for the application of the model, I think. Because uh, if you want to use massacre units uh, model to calculate how much an economic structure uh, takes, uh, like in time, in seconds maybe, to um, pay back its own cost, and then you have a situation where you have a long build time, well then you would simply add this build time to the uh, time in seconds the structure takes to, to uh, pay back its own cost, and then it would take longer for the structure to pay back its own cost. But that's something you can easily account for, right? So yeah, it's distorting the results, but uh, not in a way we can't calculate. So I would argue that this is no real drawback. And lastly, um, Bat Wolf said that uh, the RAS is going to be around 3,600 massacre units and the output is uh, 36, and he's presenting some calculation about the new RAS and the old RAS based on the value, uh, these values, right? And, well, that's uh, just uh, a small misunderstanding. Uh, the RAS already costs uh, 5,000 mass, right? So you can see here, this upgrade costs 5,000 mass. And um, 
that's why it has to cost at least uh, 5,000 mass equivalent units without even uh, considering the power uh, you also have to add on top of that, right? So there is no way it costs uh, 3,600 mass equivalent units. And um, if you want to calculate the exact value, you take uh, the mass value, that's 5,000, and you take uh, the power value, you uh, divide the power value by uh, 1,500, and um, then you add those two together. And you're going to uh, end up with uh, 6,167 mass equivalent units, right? And uh, that's more than the 3,600. So the calculations I presented in the last uh, mass equivalent unit uh, video about uh, how long it takes for the RAS to pay back its own cost, these are actually accurate, right? In mass equivalent units, of course, right? So um, it's okay to, uh, to have uh, some misunderstandings about the model because uh, it is uh, very abstract after all. Um, and I say that if we uh, consider this uh, model way more, right? If you would theorize way more, then um, we would probably uh, end up with the pseudo-scientific junk I would try to avoid for this channel because this is uh, actually uh, a channel that explains you how to play and not how to uh, think about playing, right? And that's why the next video is going to, um, to present some uh, strange situations that uh, the mass equivalent uh, unit model describes. And we're going to take a look at these uh, strange situations. And I suggest that uh, this is where we end uh, the consideration of this model. So uh, stay tuned for the next video. And uh, if you have any uh, other questions, I will answer them in the comments. Thank you very much.